welcome back to my Nearport series and if you're just joining this video uh, we've done the series on creating a lesson and adding several uh, features in it several content features like uh, videos web content interactive videos and so on uh, in this video uh, I'm just going to be showing you how what time to climb uh, looks like uh, so we're just going to start um, a particular activity which I had created earlier so I'm just going to go straight to a time to climb activity and I'll say live participation now with live participation the teacher will be in control or the teacher or the person that created Nearport will be in control and the students will be required to basically enter a code now to enter this code you just need to go to uh, join nearport.com so I'll just use my browser join nearport.com to join a lesson as a student so you put in the code so the code is j9 e v5 j9 e v5 okay and click on join and it will ask the student to enter a name so i'm going to be entering with two in on two devices so on this particular computer and on my phone just so you have an idea so full name I'm just going to leave Jackson and optional nickname I'm just going to leave that blank and join the lesson so let's see what happens here so you see time to climb I'm joining a time to climb activity so it's going to ask me to choose a character next so on my whilst it's loading I'm just going to open up join nearport.com on my phone okay so I'm just going to join on my phone just so we have two people at least in this activity to give you an idea of what it will look like in a lesson so enter the code j9 e v I'm sure most teachers will be used to uh, presenting students with codes like this to join activities you can also integrate this of course on teams on zoom and so on you if if you use google classroom you can also share this in google classroom okay so i have accessed the activity on my device so i'll be closing this and notice here now the reason why i didn't ask me uh to choose a character is because it's waiting for the teacher to basically uh, choose an, uh, an interface. So this is a new interface they have here. They've got the Carnival, the Himalaya. So this is the default one. I'm just going to choose this one, the beach, because I'm looking forward to the holidays. Um, let's look at randomizing. So you can randomize answers just so that um, students uh, will find it difficult to copy from each other. Uh, pause game between questions for discussion. You can add that. I don't need that. Play sound on all student devices. Now, if you if you've got desktops that have speakers, it could be rowdy, so you don't want to. You, you may not want to do that. You could just have it on a teacher's device, and that'll be fine. Now, notice here on this interface, it's showing, of course, the background, and it's waiting for the characters. So, on my device, I'm going to be choosing one character, and I'll be joining the game. And notice that. It says admin here and on this interface I'm going to choose another character just so that yeah I don't know if this recording will be capturing the sound but there's a sound playing in the background so notice now I've got two you've got two uh, characters now the students will be seeing this on the teacher screen and on their screen as well they will see all the characters and which makes it pretty exciting because they get to make fun of each other and say you're a penguin and so on of course in uh, uh, a light-hearted way of course um, so you as a teacher you start the game and this is what you'll see so as you can see here this is the teacher's interface so the teacher will have the list of students named here on the left so on my device I'm going to be answering the questions just at random and notice here they've updated this this wasn't like this earlier on the right hand side where you get to see the incorrect and correct answer so I'm going to answer 
just at random and so the question is done all answers have come in so it will be moving to the next answer so notice it's loading so students are ready for the next question so this is the next question and i'm going to be answering like i said at random and the moment i get it incorrectly it just basically highlights here that's the student so the num depending on the number of students you have in your lesson you will see the number of people that got it right and got it wrong now take note in this particular demonstration i'm using my uh device my laptop as both the administrator or the teacher and a student that's why i'm moving between tabs otherwise this is the only tab you would see on um on the main window the teacher's window and notice also the countdown timer is there so i'll choose of course um random answers just so that i make progress um so notice that as this is going along notice that they're climbing up a mountain uh, jackson is at the back and ad, admin is in front so next question so what you have is i'm going to answer this question as false and come back and see so this is one correct answer and i'll say false on this one as well so both students got the answer correctly so you see it's loading and i can mute the sound if i want to so this is, like I said, students find this interesting because they get to see themselves kind of getting up on a mountain like this. So um, so notice here, of course, before it gets, as it gets into the next question, they're basically running up the mountain, okay? So this is how it will go on and on until the end. So I'm just going to be answering questions real quickly uh, just so that you ha you see what happens at the end. Okay, I've got 12 questions, so this is 6 of 12. So I'm just going to uh, be choosing random answers just so that we make very quick progress. Okay, uh, and it always shows the answer at the end. I mean, if they fail the answer, they get it right. Of course, it will confirm which answer is right or wrong and so on. And I've already chosen times on uh, each of the questions. That's why you can see some of them may take longer than others. But if the students answer the questions on time, it just basically progress to the next one. It will move to the next question, okay? So, um, unfortunately, I, I, I find that you're not able to edit uh, the time, the waiting time between questions. Uh, I haven't seen any uh, any option. I'm sure it's something that they may be considering just so that you don't have students waiting too long uh, for the next questions or, or you want it to wait longer even. So it's something that you may want to, I mean, it's something that is, maybe it's already near, but I don't know, but I haven't seen that feature yet because I find sometimes the waiting time uh, could be a bother. Okay, it could be too quick and sometimes it could be too uh, slow. Okay, so I'm close to the final question and don't forget this is a teacher's interface. I'm having the points listed here. And of course, you get to see who's get uh, who's answering the questions or not. And when you notice, of course, as a teacher, a student is not answering the question. Uh, of course, you get to challenge them and find out if they're having technical issues or whatever it is. Even if it's an online lesson, I find it very useful uh, to basically uh, use that. So at the end, of course, this is what you have. It's more like a podium where you've got the first and second and um, yeah, and third. And you will have a rundown of all the students that engaged in that particular activity with your points and so on. So this is Time to Climb, and I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I was hoping not to make this longer than five minutes. Unfortunately, I didn't succeed.